Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of I Bought a Microphone. I hope everyone out there is doing okay, and, uh, you know, taking care of each other. We gotta look out for each other. Look out for those important to us. Because, uh, you know, you never know. All of us are one bad day away from living on the streets, begging for change. Something I think about occasionally. What I would do if I were ever forced into that position. I mean, it, it's hard to imagine that situation. Because uh, I have people I can fall back on. I can name a number of people that would... Uh, Probably be willing to help me rather than me ending up on the streets. So, God, just, I can't even imagine how bad it's got to get before that's where you end up. Shit. Like, I complain about my job from time to time. It's not, you know, the funnest job every day of the week, and sometimes there's mandatory overtime, and sometimes shit's crazy, and sometimes people are yelling at me about things that Nobody has any control over, but fuck, I would rather do that than the alternative, which, you know, do something, even if it wasn't that job, do any job than the alternative, which is fucking sleep on the streets. Ugh. Anyway, that's, I don't know what got me thinking about that. I guess some days, some weeks, you know, you have those weeks where you're like, you wonder what life would be like if you just walked out the fucking door one day. But it wouldn't be very good. And I have an actually pretty decent life right now. And I owe a lot of it to the job that I have. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I don't talk about work when I'm not at work. And I don't really talk about my life when I'm at work. I keep the two separate. I don't want to... Be one of those people that obsess about things, that worry about their job, that stay up at night, you know, sweating that shit. When I punch out that clock and I walk out that door, done. Absolutely done. I got nothing this week. I mean, the last couple of times I've had things planned... Certain things came to me, popped in my head, and I gave it a shot. And I got, you know, relatively, you know, for me, good responses. Um, and more views than I expected, which is nice. I don't know. I got nothing this week. I feel kind of drained. Hollow. I moved to uh, Phoenix recently from Tucson, which I had been in for, God, like 13 years, I think. It was there a long time before I finally moved here. It wasn't an easy transition, I will say. Um, the first couple of months were a little chaotic. Uh, I was commuting for a couple of weeks, then I moved, and that was a pain in the butt, and then, you know, I got everything unpacked and settled, and it was November when I moved in, so right after that was the holidays. There was Thanksgiving, and I was training for a new job at work, and then it was Christmas, and then New Year's, and then my birthday, which is a whole weekend event, the land party, where uh, me and a bunch of my friends get together and we, you know, get really drunk and play a bunch of video games and eat a bunch of bad food for, you know, two days and then, you know, basically nonstop for two days. And right after that, man, I crashed, like, hard. I went... I had another week of vacation after that and kind of didn't do anything, which I wanted to not do anything, but I kind of sunk down, like, down. 
I mean, I don't often talk about these things with people. I don't often talk about my feelings at all. And for some reason, it's easier to talk about my feelings to a microphone than to people directly, even though I know I'm going to put this out where people are going to listen to it. It's easier this way, I think. It's once removed. I don't have to deal with immediate feedback, and I don't... I'm not looking for pats on the shoulder or anything. That's not... I know that I got family that love me, and I know I got friends that care about me, and I I, I love you guys. I, I do. That's why I end this every time by telling you guys how much I love you. Because I... It's hard for me to say in person. You know? It is. It's easier to be jovial and, you know, be the, the jolly clown than to get down, you know? And that's not how I feel when I'm with the people that I love. That's not... I don't want to be morose and get down and tell how many people how much I care about them. I don't want to do that. And, you know, nobody nobody wants me to do that. They, I, everyone who I care about knows that I care about them. And at least they should. And if you don't, I'm sorry. And I'm not going to go through and name individual people, because I'll invariably forget somebody and hurt somebody's feelings, and I definitely don't want to do that. But the move is hard. Up ending my whole life of 13 years. You know, I was living with my brother and my nephew, so I had family close by all the time. And, you know, we didn't talk every day, and we didn't do things together every day, but it was really comforting having them there, and then they were gone, and then everyone else was gone. And I kind of went down to a dark place. I'm not 100% out of it yet, though I do... I do feel a change coming on. I'm getting more... I'm getting better. I feel better. I'm trying to get more active. Well, active in general, just because I'm a big fat guy. But also, you know, just more out there. Putting myself out there more. Which is part of what this was. Why I started doing this. Because I needed... I needed an outreach. I needed, no, not outreach is the wrong word. I needed an outlet for my angst. And, uh, you know, this is a good forum, I think, to do it. And, you know, we don't talk about depression a lot. Any of us, really. It's not something that you really talk about, I guess. But it's always there amongst everybody, I think, feels it from time to time. I'm prone to it. I seek solitude a lot, but solitude doesn't make me feel unhappy or make me depressed. I simply feel like I can be myself more in solitude than I can with everybody else. And sometimes I just need to be myself. And that's not to say that I'm two-faced or that I have a public persona and a private persona, necessarily. But I think we all, on a certain level, do. I don't think I can possibly be alone in this. We all have fears, things that we don't do for fear of being rejected, I think. And those who don't, who are completely their entire whole selves all the time, I, I fucking envy that. If I could do it, I would. In a second. But... Who I am is 
who I am is this guy who's talking to you right now. But they're not all there. Not every single aspect of my personality is on display. Because we're not our entire selves every minute of every day. Are we? There's the good sides and the bad sides. The ups and the downs. The lights and the darks. And the happies and the sads. And the jovials and the melancholies. I don't really know... If I have a point, if I was heading somewhere, if I was going somewhere, if I was saying something. Except that, you know, I, I am fortunate. I'm lucky, so fucking lucky, that I'm in the position that I am today, and that I have the people that I have. And then I was able to make this huge change in my life and that I know it's going somewhere great. And I mean, time will tell what that's actually going to be, but to be this lucky, to be this sad from time to time and yet have all these people that I can rely on that I can reach out to. It's amazing. And I can't imagine what it would be like to feel this way, to have these feelings, and not have people to reach out to. To not have a support system. To not have people who care about you. To be alone with misery or depression, any of it, I'm a lucky guy. This would be so much harder without all of you, without all of the people in my life. And yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what it comes to, I guess, the point that I was making. I wasn't trying to make anyone feel bad, by the way. That's not, or, you know, I'm not looking for pity. If you are moved by what I have to say, and then that's great. I, I hope you are. Because it does come from a, a real place. It comes from inside. I'm trying, as I've passed the 35 mark and entered the slow progression towards 40, I'm trying to be less cold, to try and access more honestly who I am and what I feel and it's really fucking hard like I never imagined like I I shut down for a long time and then I I opened myself up and that went poorly and then you know, I, I fell into a nice equilibrium in Tucson over the last probably seven, eight years. I got to a really comfortable place. And that was part of the problem, I guess. I mean, it was it was nice and, and warm, like a soft blanket. But I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't progressing. There was nothing changing. I wasn't accomplishing anything. I was stagnating. So I made this huge ass change on almost on a whim. I definitely didn't plan as well as I could have. 
though part of that was my work's fault. I didn't get as much notice as I would have liked. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. But here I am. I'm trying to grow in my work. And I'm trying to grow as a person. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's fun. A lot of the times it's pretty fucking terrifying. And I still spend the majority of my time isolated. But I am reaching out. You know, slowly. Deftly. And I'm hoping to in time, report further steps that I've made now that I've been here for, God, four and a half months. Time just keeps moving on. I can't languish forever. I want to be a complete person. I want to be able to express myself openly. I don't know what it is within me that holds myself back. I'm a stoic, have been most of my adult life, I've always been able to cut myself off, to not feel things. I don't want to be that dude anymore. And I'm hopeful. That's the crazy thing. There was a time when my safe little life was it. That's all, That's it. I had it. It was what I wanted. And it's what I got. And I was content with that. And I decided one day, not too long ago, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to shake the whole fucking thing up. And you know, I like a lot of it. I like the town I'm living in, for the most part. I mean, I miss the fucking hippies. Fucking Tucson, everyone's so fucking loosey-goosey and laid back. and Everyone's a little bit more tight-laced and upper-crusty up here. But, you know, it's nice. I like the place I'm living at. It's comfortable. It's home. It feels like that now. It's settled in. Put my mark on it. Made it mine. And I want good things out of the future. I want a future. That's new. I gotta tell you. 20s. Like 20 to... 26, 27, that part of my life. That was all about being left alone. It was all I wanted. I didn't want anything but to just fucking, everyone to just fucking get away from me and stop telling me to do things. It's a long time to live like that, but I think that shaped a lot of my adulthood that's followed since then. The period between that, between 26, 27 and my move, was kind of like, okay, I will accept certain people telling me certain things, but the rest of you can fuck off. And I don't want anything. And I haven't, really, until recently, had any real desires. I mean, I've been alone for so long and that's another thing that terrifies me the concept of trying to get out there and find a partner someone else I think I'm ready finally I think I'm getting to the point where I can actually share my life with somebody which 
up until recently seemed impossible, unthinkable, compromising anything in that fashion, removing any of my comforts or any of my desires or anything and supplementing them with somebody else's. It was almost unthinkable. And that's the person that I was. And it's not like I didn't care about other people. And it's not like I didn't, you know, worry about other people's needs. But when it came to me, to my space, to my personal life, to the world that I went home to, was completely unprepared to share that with anybody. Because I would have to compromise. I would have to listen to what somebody else wanted. But even beyond that, I would have to access a part of myself that I wasn't ready, didn't want to acknowledge. I would have to feel something. More than that, I would have to want myself to be felt for, if you understand what I'm saying. There's probably a more elegant way to say that, but I don't have that. To be desired, to be wanted. I moved away from that a long time ago. That way lies heartbreak and sadness and death and destruction and joy and pleasure and pain, the good kind. Oh yeah, he's a masochist. Shocking. We're all shocked about that. So, this is what happens when I don't have anything to talk about. When I open myself up and let the insides pour out. I've been on the edge of tears for half this conversation. I don't know if you've heard it in my voice or not, but it feels good to get it out. I will always be honest with you guys. I will always share whatever I feel. Like the gun control episode, I don't often talk about politics with a lot of people, but I do have strong opinions and I will share them when I feel it's necessary. And if I am feeling something, I'll try to share that with you too, but I will also bring you nerd stuff. I will bring you conversations about Blade Runner, and I will bring you conversations about comic books. I will bring you things that I am passionate about, that I feel are important, not just to me, but things that I think should be important to other people. Not that I think you have to worry about my feelings. I'm just saying I think it's important you know how I feel. It's important to me. So, I love you guys. I, I really do. I want you guys to look out for each other. Because nobody else is going to do it. This is, uh, I bought a microphone. And, uh, I'll see you next time.